this is SDL0320 representing JVS. I'm back for probably one of the most interesting nights of Supergirl and Flash's series, individually and collectively. The name of this episode is The World's Finest. This is on Supergirl, episode 18 of the first season. These are my authentic thoughts, non spoiler. I'm not going to do a spoiler review. You just have to watch the episode for yourself and see how you really feel about it. Because I actually enjoyed it. Uh, for the most part, I thought it was actually really interesting. I'm going to talk about some strong points. I'm going to talk about some kind of the weaker points in this episode. Definitely the strongest point was the chemistry of Grant Gustin and Melissa. Oh my gosh, dude. They have such impeccable chemistry. Like, I mean, I know they both came from Glee. I know they both have, like, music backgrounds. They also got really interesting smiles. And their shows are so light-hearted filled. More so than like Arrow or Legend of Tomorrow, the other shows like Gotham. These are lighter DC shows that are up there, you know, and I'm saying like, but it's like their witty banter and just the whole situation of Kara coming off of, you know, trying to express herself to Jimmy. And then basically Cat Grant gives her a really interesting perspective of how to handle Jimmy and him, you know, trying to decipher whether or not he likes her or not. Basically like, yeah, you know, stick around somebody that, you know, make him jealous basically and from that point you know Kara gets attacked thrown out of a window and then all of a sudden Flash comes to save her and it was just like from that point on like their chemistry and their communication it just had me grinning from ear to ear because it's just so different you know he was the same Grant Gustin Flash that I know and she was the same Supergirl it was just like their worlds collide it was just so interesting I was like the only thing I dislike about this is I want more. You know, I don't want it to be... The thing about this episode that I realized that Barry uh, exists in a different Earth than she does. It's like these two worlds cannot bridge. She can't just go to his Earth, you know what I'm saying? I mean, she, I guess she could go fast enough to breach the time barrier. But, I mean, it was like these worlds will never intersect. That means that him, Flash, Arrow, all this stuff... And then with her, with Superman, I guess, Batman projected, I guess, um, these worlds won't collide. That's the only thing. I was like, dang, I want to see more of them. Like, it was like, even like the small, funnier moments to the, even the moments where we're more lighthearted when Barry gives her this interesting conversation about how she needs to really deep side, like, slow down and gather her thoughts and do what she needs to do to become the woman or superhero she needs to be because he's been there, you know? And it, it's really good, thoughtful information. Now... The thing about the villains, okay, Livewire, I thought she's an awesome looking villain. You know, her motivations are really skewed, especially in this episode. Uh, still in kind of focus too. But Banshee makes an actual uh, debut in this episode. It actually turns out to be the person Siobhan. And it's like Banshee, if you don't know, she has the power of like pushing out her vocal cords to cause like sound waves and breaching the sound barrier in general. And it's like at first, I really liked her character. Um, I mean, it, it totally caught me off guard, her dealing with this situation of kind of being cursed and possession of stuff. But then her character just kind of takes the cliche way out. Um, so it's like the first half I really liked her, and then it was like by the time the, uh, the, season, the, ser the episode was over, I was like, what was her, what was she doing? You know what I'm saying? And even like with when, like, you know, with their relationship, that gets addressed in this episode. It's just like, like, why waste her character like that where it could have been more compelling her? Anyway, I don't want to spoil too much. Uh, I didn't like that part. I didn't like that part. Even the very end, the way that the villains are taken out was such a cop-out and a cliche in and of itself because the, the superheroes really aren't the ones that take out the villains. And I was just like, okay. And then the final thing is, like, you know, I thought that they had platformed this episode that, you know, there's going to be a race with Flash and, and, you know, Supergirl. And, I mean, it, it an extent happens, but it doesn't happen in the way that I thought. Where I thought that this, been, this episode probably would have benefited from having a two-hour premiere versus having it all ingested into one. Um, which is sad, uh, because this could have been an epic episode. It's like the chemistry is perfect. The characters were perfect. Like, even Jimmy and the melodrama, I was, like, on the edge of my seat. Like, is he, is he? Is he not? Is he, is he, is he, you know? Are they going to get together, you know? And even in the very end, it was an interesting cliffhanger. They didn't give me a, a preview of what's going to happen next. So, I was, like, kind of left in the wind, as it were. But this episode should have been a lot better. That's, that's what I really want to say. Because I really wanted to give this episode a nine. 
or even like a 9.5 out of 10, but it was like the moments that happened and their interaction, the, the individuals were pretty decent, but then when it actually came down to the fight, it was just like it dropped off from the epicness I guess it could have. But I'm not sure. I don't know. I don't know. Like I said, I think it would have benefited from being two average episodes. But I will not excuse the fact that it was some great chemistry between Gant and Melissa. There was some interesting developments with Jimmy and with Kara. And even like Wynn with his relationship with this whole Banshee character. I thought it was really good, but it's just some of the other stuff it just dropped off the ball and the stint. So I'll give this episode an 8 out of 10. Uh, should have been better. I apologize if y'all don't like my perspective on this. Uh, but for the most part, like, everyone was really kind of tuned in, honed in, and hoping for something for the best. But hopefully y'all enjoyed my review for Supergirl, episode 18, The World's Finest. Hopefully these two worlds do clash again. Peace, y'all.